Having the right antenna for your radio station can dramatically change your broadcast signal. I will show you the different types and one which I found to be absolutely amazing for low power radio stations. Watch to the end and I'll show you this antenna and how it makes the maximum use out of your FM transmitter signal. FM antennas come in a range of designs and configurations and not just the standard half-wave dipole. While the dipole is commonly used in FM broadcast, many radio stations have found better results from some very unorthodox antenna designs. Antenna design is not just about gain or polarity. While these do matter, antennas can even affect the down tilt of the radiated signal. Later in this video, I will show you that very special FM antenna that not only offers high gain, but also tilts the radio station signal down to the horizon. This can turn a small signal into one that seems much stronger. This is because the signal is not lost out to the sky or down to the ground. All of the signal goes out where you want it, that's to the listener. Let's first start with the standard half-wave dipole. This is the industry standard for low and high power broadcast. The reason is that this is the easiest antenna to match with additional antennas. Arrays can be built with as little as two antennas or as many as you can fit on a pole. This makes it very versatile and easy to adapt to any power level from low power community radio stations to high powered commercial stations. It is also rock solid, reliable and very unlikely to need maintenance. Once set up, this antenna array can run for many years without being tested or adjusted. But like all stock standard things, the half-wave dipole offers nothing special. It provides a basic, vertically polarized, zero-gain signal unless in an array of more than one. The additional downside to dipoles is that a lot of the signal is lost into the sky and down to the ground below the antenna. There are antennas that offer gain in a single antenna. These antennas have their downside too though. The examples are a 5.8 or a J-pole. These offer gain of about 3 dB or more. That means a single 5.8 or J-pole antenna can put out twice as much as a half-wave dipole. The 5.8 also lifts up some of the radio signal lost to the ground because the ground radials tilt the signal upwards. The downside is that if you need even more gain, it is extremely difficult, if not impossible, to match these antennas in an array. It's just not practical because of the ground planes. Also, it can only give vertical polarization just like a half-wave dipole and there is still loss of signal into the sky. The half-wave dipole also suffers from a partial directional problem because it is side-mounted. That means the pole that it is mounted on acts like a reflector, pointing a sizable chunk of the radio signal into one direction. This is fine if your antenna is outside of your broadcast area, pointing in like on a mountain on the side of a city. If you are broadcasting from the center of your broadcast area, then this is not good. You will want an antenna with an almost perfect circle radio pattern. The 5.8, because it is top mounted, does not suffer from this reflection. There is another antenna that can do more than one polarity. This is called a circular polarized antenna. This antenna does not actually give all 180 degrees of polarity of signal, but actually offers a combination of vertical and horizontal polarization. This is often more than enough because radio receiver antennas are mostly vertical or horizontal or even halfway in between like a car beasting antenna. This helps to fill in shadow areas, especially in urban broadcast footprints. So if you broadcast to a city, then this can be a solution for you. There of course is a downside, which is that the antenna not only does not offer any gain, but in most cases has a minus gain, meaning that it will radiate less on a plane than a dipole. In many cases, the circular polarized antenna needs to be paired with at least one more antenna just to provide 0 dB gain or put out the same signal strength as a single dipole antenna. You can also turn up the transmitter power to put a stronger signal into a single circular polarized antenna to compensate for the loss, but most stations would opt for the matched pair. These are extremely difficult to tune and if your antenna experiences heavy weather, you may need to have them tested and tuned every so often. 
if these antenna arrays go out of tune and become slightly mismatched, they can even create horrible ripple shadow areas that make moving within the signal footprint really unpleasant and the wave interference results in the signal doubling and halving, giving a type of pulse RF signal which is really bad for listening on a car radio. They also suffer the same problem of the dipole in that they are side-mounted, giving a semi-directional radio pattern. When they do work though, they work great and are perfect for cities and urban areas. But now, what if you have a low-power signal and want to squeeze out as much range as you can from it? If you broadcast to a lower density area, like suburban or rural areas, then circular polarization will not help much. What you want is more gain and more importantly down tilt. This is where a very special antenna comes in. This is a type of modified J-pole. Commonly known by its manufacturer's name, the Dominator, this very special and unique antenna provides not only some pretty decent gain, but it also tilts most of the radio signal to the horizon. This provides for much longer range with the same amount of power as very little of the signal is lost down to the ground or up into the sky. From my own experience, I found these not to be empty claims, but in fact offer the results promised. The signal is dramatically stronger and especially noticeable with power as low as 1 watt, which can result in a comfortable 10 kilometers or 7 mile radius with just 1 watt of ERP or effective radiated power and lower signals as far as 30 kilometers or 20 miles. With 10 watts or more, this antenna can cover amazing distances depending on the terrain. Even though there is only about 3 dB gain, the signal feels like it has 6 or even 9 dB gain. Even the shadow areas filled up nicely. The antenna is also mounted on top of the pole and not on the side which makes the antenna radiation pattern almost a perfect circle. This means that if you broadcast inside your broadcast footprint, you will get a nice even footprint as opposed to a dipole which is semi-directional. There are of course downsides to this antenna like all antennas. They are that tuning this antenna for the first time can be a little tricky, but once it's tuned, it stays that way. So once it's up, you won't need continuous maintenance like a circular polarized antenna might. One of the biggest problems with this antenna, as with all top-mounted antennas, is that the radiator section is above the mounting pole, which means that if it is hit by lightning, the lightning goes straight into the antenna and down to the transmitter. This results in catastrophic damage to your transmitter and even other equipment connected to it. I have experienced this and it's not fun. In fact, I was in the middle of a show when the lightning hit and the radio station instantly went off air. It could not even be fixed straight away because it was too dangerous in the bad weather. We had to wait for the sun to come out before we could even go see the damage. We had to replace the transmitter and all the electrical plugs connected to it. So you might think this is not a good option for your radio station antenna, but you would be wrong. There was in fact a very simple, very cheap thing we could have done to prevent this from happening. After replacing the transmitter, we actually did this, which is to place a lightning arrester into the cable and grounding it. This simple and relatively cheap device takes the lightning and pushes it straight into the ground, bypassing the transmitter. Once we went back on air with the lightning protector connected, we never went off air again from a lightning strike. In fact, we had multiple lightning strikes from many storms after that, never suffered any damage or went off air as a result. The Dominator antenna is also better at dealing with smaller secondary lightning strikes in that the main radiator pole is partially disconnected from the radiator. This means that the lightning is unlikely to hit the radiator directly, but it does get a strong secondary or induced strike. So if you want to install this antenna, or in fact any top mounted antenna, even if you install side mounted antennas, you must install one of these lightning protectors. This protector does not cause any significant signal loss at all and is worth its weight in gold if you want to survive lightning strikes on your FM transmitter. Although this video has been quite long, if you are still watching, you are probably enjoying it, so I'll give you one last FM antenna option. This one does not have all the bells and whistles of the Dominator, but it does offer a nice radiation pattern, which is also almost perfectly circular, and it lifts a little bit of the signal upwards to reduce loss down to the ground. This is good if your antenna is only 10 or even 20 meters above ground. 
If it's very high up, then the improvement from the up tilt is minimal. This antenna is called a quarter wave antenna. This antenna does not have any gain. It has 0 dB gain just like a dipole, but it is top mounted instead of side mounted like a dipole. The radiator is actually the same length as a half wave dipole, even though it's a quarter wave. The reason is that a half wave dipole radiator is actually only a quarter of a wavelength long, just like a quarter wave. But because the dipole is perfectly vertical, it's called a half wave because the ground plane is vertical and therefore the whole antenna is a half wave in length but it actually only radiates from a quarter of a wavelength part. The quarter wave antenna is perfect if your license does not allow for gain or down tilt in your antenna. Because the antenna is top mounted, it works better than a half wave dipole if you broadcast from the center of your radio footprint. It does have the same issue of not being able to be put in an array of multiple antennas like a dipole and is susceptible to lightning as well, but as before, the cheap lightning arrester fixes that. It is however very easy to tune and once tuned stays rock solid solid just like a dipole. If you only want to use one antenna with no gain and a circular radiation pattern, then this is a great option. It's also very affordable and would probably be the cheapest FM antenna you could buy. Be sure to subscribe to see more of these videos.